What's up everyone, Lukande Mwila here. New year, new content, but we're still talking K8s. In this video, I'm going to cover how to build and deploy a Node.js application to an Amazon EKS cluster using Scaffold and GitHub Actions. And before we do that, we're gonna take a step back and deal with why this approach is important or why I'm recommending it in the first place. Now, getting your CI CD process right is a crucial step in your team's DevOps lifecycle. So the CI stage for starters is essentially the automating of the ongoing process for integrating software from different contributors in a team to a project version control system. In this case, we're working with GitHub. And CI essentially entails testing the source code for quality checks to make sure that the application builds as expected. Continuous deployment picks up from there and automates the deployment of your application using the successful build from the CI stage. And that's where Scaffold and GitHub Actions come in. Scaffold is really cool because it complements the inner development loop for coding, building, and testing, and all the debugging that you're typically gonna deal with. And this can also be used with the outer development loop, such as a fully fledged CI CD pipeline. And so Scaffold abstracts the build and deployment process for your containers, uh, but you can define how this actually works in a Scaffold configuration file. And that same file can be used locally for KH development, as well as for your production grade pipeline that deploys to some kind of target environment, which is what we'll be doing. And this gives you a consistent workflow because you have the same build and deployment configuration workflow locally and remotely. And GitHub Actions comes in because we're gonna use that to define a workflow for how our application will actually be built, tested, and deployed to EKS using Scaffold. And it works really well because we're using GitHub for our repo. And so to have our CI staged carried out in the exact same platform really makes things easier. I've switched over to my editor. And uh, what we'll do is kick off with just getting a lay of the land of the application. And I'll just go over some of the main components before I spend more of my time with the scaffold configuration file and the main.yaml file, which defines the steps for the GitHub actions. Uh, that's where we want to spend most of our time because that's the core focus of the video. If you've seen some of my previous ones, then you'll be very familiar with this source code in front of you. I typically use a basic Node.js application uh, for demonstrative purposes. And the only change I've made here, firstly, there's a single root, as you can see over here with the test endpoint. And I've modified the text to say a simple node app is working as expected. Typically, I just use simple node app is working. But that change is on purpose so that we can commit and push to our main branch branch to actually trigger the pipeline. So this is all that's going on inside of this Node.js application. It's very basic. Uh, perhaps the only other thing that is of some relevance is the test over here. And so that is simply going to be a test for that specific endpoint as well to make sure that we're getting a 200 response um, to ensure that that route actually works as expected. Not to mention we should get a response of a string and um, we should also get the relevant text. Now, as you can see over here, uh, this is wrong. So our test would fail. So we need to modify that to simple note app is working. Oh, I am butchering this. There we go, simple node app is working as expected. And to, I could have probably just copied and pasted that, but where would the fun be? All right, so um, that is now matching our actual test, our actual text rather. So this means that this test should pass as expected. So we shouldn't have any issues in our pipeline. Next up is our Docker file. And again, this should look very familiar to you if you have um, experience with Docker files, but I will pop a link in the description as well, just so those of you who are brand new to Docker will know how to work through these manifest files. I'm not gonna go through it in detail because it is not the focus. In addition to that, we've got our manifests file and inside of this manifest.yaml file, we've got a deployment configuration and a service configuration. And so the deployment is gonna make uh, or rather create three replicas for our pod for this um, express test Node.js application. As you can see over here, we've got three replicas defined and under the template property is where we've got the specifics for our pod and um, the application is listening for traffic on port 8080. And below over here, we've got our service, which will make sure that a load balancer is created in the AWS environment. And it's also gonna be listening for port for traffic on port 8080 and will in turn forward that traffic through to the relevant pods um, that are gonna be running inside of my Amazon EKS Kubernetes cluster. Great, and so just so you're aware that you can create these uh, manifest files beforehand, um, or alternatively, you can generate them with scaffold as well if you just provide the relevant flag. So now that we've gotten 
an idea of what's going on in the application, we can turn our attention to the more important aspects. And so for starters, we'll look at Scaffold over here. And Scaffold works with a configuration file to define how you build, test, and deploy your application. And there's a lot more that you can do with it. Um, for this um, particular video, these are the things that we're focusing on. And as you can see over here, We've got these top level fields, build, test, and deploy, and they respectively deal with those areas. And so for the building process, um, I'm going to be building my image using a Docker file, which is specified over here as well. And it is contained inside of my source code. It's the one that I showed um, just a few seconds or a minute earlier. And um, I specify the image over here, and that way it will be able to identify the relevant repository that it should be working with. And so it will use that every time that it is building, whether you do this locally or remotely. So in our case, because we're building a production grade pipeline, um, this will actually build the image and push it through to the relevant registry inside of my Docker repository for the express uh, test container image. And then over here for test, and this is really cool, um, you can specify the context so that it knows um, exactly what we're dealing with in terms of um, the particular image that it should build. And it will then use um, the commands that you specify in order for you to test your application. And this is always good, is always good to carry out. And so it's an important part of CI, just as I uh, mentioned earlier. And so um, I'm just simply running npm run test, which will execute that test that I showed earlier. And uh, provided that that passes, we'll move on to the deployment stage. And you'll notice that under deployment, we've got this um, uh, cube cuddle commands that will be run. And it also gets to specify the different types of manifests. So my deployment and service configuration are living inside the same file. Hence, um, they're just being a single one here under this particular array. But if you wanted to split that up across uh, different files, you're um, more than welcome to go ahead and do something like that. And then lastly, and I'm just going to collapse everything else and close others and collapse that. Lastly, we have our main.yaml file. And just so you're aware of where this lives, you'll notice that there is a .github directory. And under that, there's workflows. And then the main.yaml is located inside of that. And so this is the file that actually specifies or details exactly how um, GitHub Actions should go through the process of um, continuous integration and then proceeding to deploy my application to the relevant cluster. So I'm just naming it build and deploy to EKS and I'm dealing with a single main branch. And then under ENV, if you've worked with any CI tools, then this is probably going to be a, a no brainer for you. So this is where you get to de determine some environment variables. And I'm storing a number of values inside of um, my secrets uh, section inside of GitHub. And this is a great way to store some sensitive data. And so I have an access key and a secret key for a specific AWS profile that I can make use of in order to have the relevant permissions uh, to carry out all the things that I want to do, such as connecting to the Kubernetes cluster and EKS, and then uh, being able to then proceed to run the relevant commands for deployment. In addition to that, I specify the cluster name, which is in, I'm also storing inside of secrets, and um, also the region for it. In addition to that, I want to be able to connect to my Docker registry, because remember, during the build stage, the image will be built and then pushed through to the relevant repo and get pulled um, before um, and the images will be pulled uh, as part of the uh, deployment process inside of your Kubernetes cluster. So um, you're going to need to be able to access your registry. And so I have my Docker ID and password as well stored inside of secrets. And then we move on to the jobs section, which is um, the meat of um, everything else that has to be carried out. And so as you can see over here, um, I start with my steps. And I, I like to put comments in here just so it's a little easier to understand exactly what is going on. And so for starters, uh, just get the environment ready, such as installing the relevant Node.js uh, dependencies for the application. I go ahead and, um, as I mentioned, install them. And then it can proceed to test. You don't need to carry this out, especially since there's already going to be a step for that when we run the relevant scaffold command. But you're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, after that, I then proceed to log into the Docker registry. And as you can see, I'm using the ID and password environment variables. And so you can actually, this is one way of doing it, as I've specified over here. Alternatively, you can just put the direct environment variables, which you'll see me doing uh, a little bit lower. After that, I proceed to install kubectl. And all of this, um, these commands are available on the official documentation. So you can fetch those for the relevant environment that you might be dealing with. You might not be working with um, a Linux environment. Um, 
and then I'll just proceed over here. And the next thing will be scaffold. So I proceed to install scaffold. Again, you can get all of this, uh, these commands from the documentation as well. And um, after that, just because I want to make sure that the ongoing workflow is optimized and efficient, um, I just cache um, all the dependencies that get um, installed and downloaded so that um, it doesn't, the build time doesn't take long um, for uh, future builds that may take place. And then next up, uh, just make sure that um, AWS is installed correctly, and um, this should be the case by default uh, with GitHub Actions. And then I just proceed to configure a profile, as you can see over here, the access key ID, and I'm using the environment variable for access key ID, secret access key, as well as setting a default region. In my case, it's EU West 1. And then I'm just running the AWS STS get caller identity to make sure that um, the relevant profile is configured as expected, and I'll be able to get the see those results in the logs um, just in case there are any issues. And then the next thing is to connect to the EKS cluster and this command over here, AWS EKS uh, region and specify the region, update the cube config, and then specify the name of the cluster. And once that is done, um, the kube config details will be updated and I should be able to connect to my cluster after that. And then the only thing that is left to do is to make use of scaffold to actually build and deploy to the EKS cluster. Remember, scaffold is going to make use of the current configuration context for, your, for Kubernetes. And so all I have to do is run scaffold run and this will go through the build, and, the build test and deployment process once. And um, once that is done, I can then just verify the deployment and I'm simply running kubectl get pods to see that I have the expected results. So all that I have to do now is I'm just going to open the terminal in here. And I do have a couple of changes that are still pending. So I'm going to commit these changes. And we'll call it refactor, updated text for test root. And I forgot a very important step. <laughs> Once that's done, just run git push. I have switched over to my browser, and what you're looking at now is the GitHub repository for this particular application, and I'm in the action section. And so as you can see over here, the deployment worked as expected. All of the steps that I defined inside of my configuration file, the main.yaml file, passed successfully. And um, if you want to quickly verify that, so some of the things that I'm most interested in is to make sure that the connection to the Kubernetes cluster worked as expected. And you can see over, you can see that over here, that the context was actually added to my cube config in the CI stage, and then could go a step further, have a look at the, the build and deployment process using scaffold. And so it goes through the process of actually building your container based on that Docker file and the image is created and pushed through uh, to Docker Hub. In addition to that, you can see that this is where my test was actually run and it passed successfully, which is great. And then very important is actually verifying the deployment. And so if you have a look over here, and so I run the kubectl uh, get pods uh, command, which you can see over there. And you can see we have those three replicas for my application uh, running successfully. And so the next thing is to just head over to the AWS console. And as you can see over here, I'm in the EC2 section, by the way, and I've headed over to load balancers. And so I just get that DNS name. And remember, this was created because of that uh, service that I defined inside of my manifest.yaml. And so if I just head over to um, another tab over here with the browser and enter that DNS name and you'll notice it's listening for traffic on port 8080 when the path is test and I get the expected response which is simple node app is working as expected. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope that was helpful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if there's a particular topic you'd like me to cover, comment in the section below.